Welcome to the UFO Show. In this installment, we learn the UAP task force is getting more organized. A bombshell book about extraterrestrials is coming very soon. And we hear two very different, very strange encounters with aliens that you won't be able to wrap your head around. Let's get to it. The Pentagon in the States is forming a new task force to investigate... In August of 2020, the Pentagon established the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force in order to improve the country's understanding of and gain insight into the nature and origins of UAPs. Their mission, officially, is to detect, analyze, and catalog UAPs that could potentially pose a threat to U.S. national security. And while we all know UAP is an umbrella term for any kind of flying object that can't be explained, including foreign aircrafts, let's face it, they're hunting aliens. We can all say it. Since the establishment of the task force, we've seen the release of the Pentagon's preliminary assessment of UAPs. And while the report didn't provide any of the bombshell revelations most of us were hoping for, it still revealed that 143 of the 144 UAP incidents under investigation still had no rational explanation. So where do we go from here? Well, it would appear Congress is still taking the matter seriously, as two proposed intelligence bills, one in the Senate, one in the House, seek to ramp up activity on the task force. And while, disappointingly, the suits in Congress aren't yet willing to say the word extraterrestrial, it would certainly appear as though they're very serious about the continued search for unidentified flying objects. On the Senate side of things, Section 345 of S-2610, yeah, don't ask us what that means, the bill calls for support and oversight of the UAP task force. It asks that each element of the intelligence community and the Department of Defense makes whatever data they have regarding UAPs available immediately to the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force and to the National Air and Space Intelligence Center. They're asking that the task force and whatever other branch of government has info on UAPs submit quarterly reports to Congress on their findings, which essentially means there's going to be a lot more talk of UAPs in the halls of the government. On the House side of things, Section 1652 of the bill demands an establishment of an office to address UAPs, asking the Secretary of Defense to establish said office to carry out a department-wide mission to investigate UAPs. The duties of the office range from developing procedures to synchronize the analysis of UAP incidents, coordinating investigations with other departments of the government, and even coordinating with U.S. allies such investigations. Furthermore, the bill asks that an annual report be filed at the end of every year, which will include analysis of data and intelligence regarding all things UAP. Phew! That's a lot of fancy ways of saying that multiple departments in the government are, if these bills pass, will now be required to share with one another all of their info on UAPs. We're sharing it all Which would mean the world at large will hear more and more about what they're finding up there. Now, we just have to wait and see if these bills get passed. The world, maybe not just our world, is watching. Thank you for watching The UFO Show. And I ask that if you enjoy our shows, subscribe to our channel right now, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. Now back to the show. Perhaps the most exciting UFO news isn't going to come at us from the future, but from past incidents. That's the hope for UFO enthusiasts with the news that notable believer and former Army counterintelligence special agent Luis Elizondo is writing a non-fiction tell-all about all things UAPs. For a quick bit of background, Elizondo was once the director of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, essentially the OG version of the current UAP task force. He worked at the program from 2008 to 2017, and in that time, he claims he saw data and heard accounts from eyewitnesses who encountered UAPs almost on a daily basis. He became a full-fledged believer in UAPs, but found that his superiors were taking such matters less than seriously. In 2017, he resigned his post due to frustration with senior officials who weren't interested in what they saw, treating it like science fiction. But that was then, this is now. And the world at large takes UAPs a lot more seriously at the moment, which brings us to Elizondo's book, 
the rights to which went to major publisher HarperCollins after an intense bidding war. The memoir, quote, promises to reveal shocking, never-before-shared details regarding what Elizondo has learned about UFOs and the profound implications for humanity, all of which will escalate what is already a hot topic globally. Most recently, Elizondo made an appearance on 60 Minutes, where he steadfastly maintained his position that this phenomenon is no joke. No release date has been revealed just yet, but you can imagine that we'll be keeping a very close eye on its progress. Furthermore, we can already imagine a film adaptation isn't far behind. One man who doesn't need convincing? Sammy Hagar, legendary Van Halen frontman and tequila connoisseur. We've heard from celebrities who had close encounters before, with names like Aaron Rodgers and Miley Cyrus saying they saw some unnatural phenomenon in their lifetimes. But no experience can be matched by Sammy's. Evidently, this is a story the rocker has told before, but it's worth highlighting again due to its intense WTF factor. The incident in question took place almost 60 years ago in the foothills of Lau Creek, Idaho, and Hagar was 19 years old. And the experience he describes was more of a telepathic one than a physical one. I felt like I was being programmed, like someone's tapping into me, like it was a, a string, string from my head, from my head to 13 miles up on a mountain place called Lau Creek. And I know right where it was, this little foothills, uh, at the foothills, there was a, a, um, an object there there was two people in it, two creatures in it, and it was 19, I want to say it was 64, 65. It was that, so there was no remote control. So yeah. There was no satellites. There was no computers. But I sensed they were tapping into me somehow. And they went, oh, he's waking up. All mental telepathy, you know, they just, the, the communication went in my head. He's waking up. They, they yelled out a numerical code, not of our numerical system. as like, and it went. And I could almost feel the plug, like an electrical charge, leaving, <clears throat> zapped into their ship, put a light on in the ship where I see shadows of these creatures. And I woke up in my house and my bed. My room was infinity white. I couldn't move. I was completely paralyzed. My eyes were open. And all of a sudden... BAM! It just went black, and it was the time it was, and I broke sweat, and I was shaken, and um, I felt like my body was so drained, uh, and uh, from, that I, moment on, from that moment on, I, I believed, believed in, in UFOs. UFOs. Shockingly, that's not even the weirdest experience Sammy has had with extraterrestrials. He goes on to describe an incident that took place in the remote village of Lake Placid, New York. Quote, these little gray creatures that were hanging out in Lake Placid, I had a house out in the wilderness, and they had just no electricity mm -hmm. except a log cabin uh, back in the 80, late 70s, 80s, early 80s, 81, 82. And uh, these little guys are hanging around in that cabin, man, one night. And, uh, you know, even slamming doors and stuff. Not slamming, yeah. They were uh, physical guys. I don't know uh, if they were robots or what, but uh, it, it was, was freaky. freaky. It, scared it scared me to me. death. Now... You may wonder if Sammy may have had one too many tequilas during those incidents, but it's worth noting he's maintained an interest in UFOs ever since that first occurrence, going so far as to become a junior astronomer. And if we can't believe in Sammy Hagar, who can we believe in? Think Sammy's stories are weird? You ain't heard nothing yet. Meet Angelia Schultz a.k.a. Angelia Lynn Johnston. Allegedly, a former intelligence officer and a one-time candidate for South Dakota's Secretary of State. Schultz was once seen as a rising star in the Democratic Party, but now she's close to becoming famous for something far more interesting. Mrs. Schultz gathered a small group of reporters at the Lincoln Memorial in August 2021 to tell quite a tale. One involving aliens, a secret underground base, and telepathy. That's right, Mrs. Schultz has met aliens, and they're currently living in the good old U.S. of A. Her story is a convoluted one, so let us break it down for you. According to Schultz, she met a couple in January of 2018 who invited her to their home in the Mojave Desert. The husband, referred to as Wayne, had evidently excavated a tunnel in the side of a nearby mountain where he discovered an alien base. 
Wayne, was willing to bring Schultz to this secret location. And naturally, she agreed to go because, as she says, she had nothing to lose. That's debatable, but we'll move on. Schultz went to the location, entered the tunnel, and deep inside the mountain, they encountered several different races of being, one of which consisted of traditional gray aliens, while the other were tall beings with fine white hair, radiant alabaster skin, who greeted her with a warm, quote, hello, we've been waiting to talk to you. Another being was described as looking like a, quote, very beautiful praying mantis, if you can believe such a thing. Schultz often referred to them as beings of light and relayed that these are indeed very friendly aliens. Some other eye-popping details include the beings removing Schultz's consciousness from her body, teleporting her back to Wayne's house, and, most crucially, a message of love from the aliens, along with a guarantee that we're all evolving and we'll all soon learn how to speak to these charming visitors via conscious communication. Apparently, these aliens have been around just as long as we have, biding their time before speaking up to a selected and lucky few. But now, we all have to prepare for contact which is why the press conference about this earth-shaking development. Schultz isn't done talking to these aliens. In fact, she's organizing a team of experts to take a trip back to the mountain, where she will once again enter that tunnel and bring her group to the alien base. An astronaut, a well-known documentarian, an investigative reporter, physicists, astronomers will make up this team. So if you fall into one of these categories, Make sure to reach out to Mrs. Schultz in order to sign up for this once-in-a-lifetime journey. It's easy to be skeptical of this tale and of what's to come. But why don't we just wait it out and see what happens before jumping to conclusions? There's no date for the expedition yet, but you never know. A few months from now, we could be seeing pictures of a beautiful, telepathic praying mantis everywhere we go. That's it for now, folks. The truth is out there, somewhere. And we're going to be keeping an eye on things for all you true believers. And if you have anything to share with us, don't hesitate to send us an email at ufoshow at joeblow.com. We're eager to hear from all our fellow UFO and outer space enthusiasts. Also, please share your thoughts and any cool extraterrestrial news you have in the comments section. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, as we're going to be your one-stop shop for all things alien going forward. Until next month. Keep watching the skies.